Okay, an interesting tidbit. We're gonna actually do live, I'm, take, I'm going out to a website, I'm a sucker for live demos. We're gonna have live interactive graphs using the d3.js library to kind of show you some cool stuff. So I have been praying all day that the internet stays solid. I have some screenshots on a thumb drive, but it doesn't do it justice. So anyway, a quote from IBM's website, every day we create 2.5 quintillion, I can't even say that word, quintillion bytes of data. I had to look that up, how many zeros that was. That's a lot. And, the, and there's another one that says 90% of the data has been created in the last 10 years. It, it's impossible to sift through it all, right? Uh, thank goodness there's some people that are definitely tempting it. So what sparked this uh, presentation was um, my colleague Travis and Aaron were working, uh, Travis was working with a professor in our teacher education and leadership and had Megan do some analytics about how students were accessing the course. And this came up. During the semester, as students entered this course, only 53% of those times were through the homepage. And when I saw that, I went, whoa. Right, sometimes we look at the homepage as what? The gateway to our course, right? We, teachers put announcements, we do other things that we think students are always gonna see. So that sparked my curiosity, and it led to this little research project that is ongoing, nowhere near finished, but I wanna show you some cool things and hopefully get some insights from you, okay? So here was some, uh, my question to you. What can Canvas data tell, well, this is my question, sorry. What can Canvas data tell us about course design? Are students navigating courses the way they think they are, or how we think we designed them to be navigated? When you design a course, instructional designers and faculty, do you look, do you, you know, you kind of think, hey, I'm gonna design this course so it's easy for students to find stuff and I expect them to navigate it a certain way. Raise your hand if that kind of rings true, right? Me too, right, I teach. And uh, I've got my own class here and I'll show you some stats. And guess what? Looking at the data, I found mistakes in my own class. So that was a cool thing, all right? Really, the proper title for this presentation shouldn't be about what Canvas data tells us about course design, but what can Canvas data tell us about how students navigate courses or student behaviors in our courses, right? Um, interesting, all right. Um, so what I did with the help of my colleagues from Camp City is we cho I chose four classes. Random, I went to the instructional to designers and asked them for some idea of some courses that they knew the instructor would be willing to let us dive into the data of the course and also courses that they had worked with. And so I have a web development course, which is mine, a graduate education course, a creative arts, if you went to Aaron and, and Travis's presentation yesterday, that's that one, and a thousand level stats class. Excuse me, I got a bit of a cough, and so I got a thing, okay? All right, okay. So I'm throwing this out right now, and you can just raise your hand and we'll shout it out for this. When students first enter the Canvas course you have designed or one that you teach, where do you think, where do you expect them to go first? Somebody raise your hand, shout, shout something out. Modules? Modules? Front page, syllabus, calendar, grades, huh? There's an interesting one about that, right? Okay, yeah, there was a lot of differences there, right? Guess what, students are doing all those things. Um, so anyway, so I'm gonna show you briefly, because it's hard to present this data without showing you what the course looks like, and we don't have a lot of time, so I'm gonna quickly show you front pages of courses. All of these courses, I believe, were designed with Kenneth Ware or USU Design Tools, as it's known. So you'll see some of it. Okay, here's the stats class. So this is the home page. Notice across the banner at the bottom, you've got start here, office hours, keys, and calculator helps. And then you've got each of the modules there. What's missing from this is a link to the syllabus, but it is on the left-hand menu, right? We can put that on the left-hand menu. And another caveat is we did not move to the UI until spring semester was over. So all this data is before the new UI, okay? It was spring semester. Okay, that's the stats course. 
Okay, here's my internet development course, kind of looks similar. Across the bottom, I've got start here, syllabus, assignments, and more resources. What you don't see down below is all the modules as well. So I have all the modules. And actually, my modules are not Canvas modules. I put all my course content in the assignment page. Something I discovered with that WYSIWYG editor, why create another page, why put it in a module, I put it right in the assignment, a one-stop shopping for students. Not everybody does that, I do that, it's worked very, very well for me. And it's simplified my updating and course design and I believe navigation for students. All right, here's the creative arts class. A start here, syllabus, modules, and then we've got the general course discussion. And then we've got the links below to the different modules. It was a pathways course. In other words, students could choose where they wanted to go to complete assignments in the arts, drama, film, or music category. All right, and then the final one was TIL 6280. Because of time, I'm not gonna spend much time here, but you can see all of them very similar. Notice that syllabus there on the front page. We're gonna see some interesting stuff as we start looking at data. Okay, oh, can't do the takeaways yet. All right. Sorry, if you got a picture of, did you get a picture of that? You could go home, you could walk out of here right now and be happy. And be the first in line for lunch, right? Okay, so we're going live now to some, um, some dashboards um, that are interactive and let's hope they work. Now I'm gonna be zooming in and out. I've sat in the back of this room, I know what it's like. I'm 50 years old, my eyes don't work as well as they used to. Um, so anyway, so I'm gonna start with that USU 13 30 civilizations course, okay? And I'm gonna go over here to the full semester, look, look, and um, I'm gonna look at all students, okay? So during the, and I'm gonna explain what this graph shows. Let me zoom in. I'm gonna go over here first just so you can see what those colors represent, okay? You can see, can you read in the back, can you see that word home? Kind of? Okay, we'll go a little bit farther. All right, you can just kind of see different colors and I'll try to describe it. I used to be a software, well I've done lots of software training so I'm good at calling things out. Okay, so you can see these, you can kind of see like announcements is a dark red, right, to the announcements tool. To an individual announcement is a little lighter color. Make sense? What's going on? Okay, let's go over to the graph. So when I roll over this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom out a bit so you can see it. This right here is the home page. So for this course, throughout the entire semester of every time a student entered the course, 50% of all students started at the homepage throughout the semester. What you can see next is the next level. Okay, once they were at the homepage, you can see this group of, of uh, places they went. You can see a natural path. One of the biggest ones was what? Modules and then to a page, right? And those who would know how that course was designed could easily say, hey, that's working pretty good, right? And then if they didn't go to the, uh, if they didn't go to the uh, uh, modules, they either went to grades or they went to, they just ended. There's a few of them that came to the homepage and they ended, right? <laughs> Five. All right, so if they didn't go to, so when you think about, okay, they didn't go right to the homepage. Um, where did they go, okay? Some of them went, 17% of all student visits went right to an assignment, right? That to-do list, very key as I've looked through this data and gone through it, students are going exactly where they need to to get what needs to be done. So that assign, an assignment that's due is where? The to-do list, right? So that's a path. Does that stress anybody out that students bypass our homepage? Okay. Yeah. It doesn't stress me out. I actually think it's cool. I th but it also says our homepage can't be where we expect all students to visit every time they come to a class, right? Okay, 11% uh, was to a discussion, 8% was to grades, 3.7% was to a page, et cetera, et cetera, so forth, okay? This is a pretty cool graph just to kind of get a good overview. Now, let me show you something even even a little bit cooler. Now, so after this question I said, okay, I wanna know what happens the very first time they log into a course. Where do students go, right? That's the first time they're logging in. So let's go look at that. So we're gonna go time of access. And what we did, and then I can actually show you some paths that students took. 
All right. So I'll go select a course. We'll go back to the 1330. This is the first course access for all students, OK? And this is what it looks like all over the place, right? So let's look at that. It's 67% of all students started at the home page. But where did they go next? They went to a page. Here they went, oh, they found the syllabus, OK? So, but you know, it wasn't a natural sequence to the syllabus. Here's another one. They went from home to syllabus. And then look at this. <laughs> one student, OK? So take away from this. <laughs> take away from this. You can see it all over. Many students' first visit to a course is what? Exploratory. They're trying to check out your course, right? Um, and and they're, they're trying to figure out how it operates. And so it brings a question, if we have more consistent design among courses in our institution, I think it's great that they're exploring, right? They're clicking around. OK, enough of that. So now we're going to go look at some paths into that course. So now I'm going to select that same course. And I've got every student who entered that. It's all anonymized. I can't tell who these students are. But we're going to look at some students. And I, as I went through it again last night, I picked a few students out for this, this particular class. Um, we'll just look at student one. OK, so what you're seeing, and let me zoom out. What you're seeing is, what was interesting is I was only going to look at the first and the second course visit. But I, there's a lot of students who did almost nothing their first visit, right? They clicked in. So I, I had uh, Megan go through the first six visits just so we could get a look. So look at this. Home, start here. That was a good sign, right? They went right to the start here. OK. Ah, oh, they got to the syllabus. Then they went to announcements and home modules, you know, and then they started exploring. Their second visit? They went right to the introduction, third. Uh, on visit five, they just went to the general course discussion. And so it took them clear till visit five before they went to the general course discussion. OK? So that's, that's a student there. Um, let's go down to student 27 and just look. OK. So here's another one where they, they, they're finding the syllabus. They're finding it again. They're getting to the start here. It looks like they're doing OK. Um, I've got one more. I can't remember why I chose this one, but we'll look at it. Aha, this is why. OK, look at their first visit. Home, syllabus, which is pretty cool. Their second visit, they made it to the home page, right? Maybe it was the wrong course. Third visit, home, uh, a module or a, a thing, what is art? Okay. An assignment, and then modules, and then course four. OK, let's go over to my course. And we'll look at, at stuff. Um, and I know this is kind of rushed. There's a lot of stuff to get through. And I also have some scatter plots trying to correlate things with grades. But I don't have time to, to really get into that. I haven't analyzed it fully. And in some classes, it's very evident. And others, the scatter plot is truly a scatter plot. It's everywhere. All right, let's look at this one. OK. We're going to go to students. Well, OK, let me, let me go to all first. I can't talk and operate a computer at the same time. So this is my course. So this is looking at all student, all course visits, 45% when you average it out. But what I like about this is students are going directly to that assignment page, right? And one of the big ones, if they're hitting the home pages, they're going directly to the assignment or to the assignments, or they're going uh, end. What's interesting is, and we'll probably see this in some of the students, I see students hitting grades their first visit, right? Tell me why they're hitting grades. What do you think? Yeah, total number of assignments, right? So I'm seeing patterns of students hitting grades right in their first or few visits. And I was like, at first it was like, why are you going to the grade book? You haven't done anything, right? But what are they doing? They're checking out how many assignments are due in this class. First week, two weeks of the semester, what are students doing? Dropping, adding courses, especially at the the thousand level. I saw that in my class. 12% um, of all student visits began with this sequence of pages, which was the announcement. So let me go over to the student paths of my course so that I, because I know this one best. And I've asked John Louvier, he's going to join us in a few minutes to talk about where we're going next with all this stuff. He's been, he's been thinking through that. So here's an interesting one. Okay, this is a student first visit. I only had 20 students spring semester. I usually have around 32. 
Um, it was a light semester. But the first course visit was to where? An announcement. Before school semester started, what did I do? I sent out an announcement. I even let students into my course early. What did students do? They went, there's a, there's a good fair number of them up on their first visit, they went to that announcement directly first. It was just a welcome to class, kind of a, kind of a nudge to get them going. Look at this, grades, grades on their next two visits, right? They wanted to check out those assignments. Um, then they went to the introduce yourself module, uh, things like that. Uh, anyway, so comments, not questions, comments from what you're seeing. Insights from what you're seeing in some of this. Yes? Right, so the, 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 the point was assessments. Their students are looking for how they're gonna be assessed in the class and they wanna know that up front. Yeah, good observation. Anything else that somebody picked out looking at this? Yes? Right, so the thing was, we don't see the date and time stamps here, right? Gonna add that. I actually have it in the, the, the CSV file that's feeding this. It's just not here in the visualization. I first got that CSV, and then we tried to figure out how are we going to uh, visually represent this, and this was a simple way to do it, at least for me, because I'm a very visual person, and just sorting through an Excel CSV spreadsheet, but I had all the date and timestamp. I, I agree, I think that's an important thing. Okay, one more observation from somebody. Over here. Right, so the comment was, you can't predict how students are gonna navigate your courses, right? Um, so you've got to design your course well, so one, they don't miss something, and two, they can get from any point to any point quickly, okay? That, that's, that's a key takeaway. I, I agree, that's, that's, a, that's a key takeaway. Now, we could spend all day looking at student pass, and it's a, I enjoy it, it's a lot of fun, because it's kind of detective, right? You're kind of going, now why did they do that, right? What's missing is the why. And in some instances, I don't have the context for what was going on in the class at that time. But it's, it's been very fascinating to me to see this. So let me pull up some takeaways that I took from this, and then we'll go from there. All right, takeaways and observations. The first one is students' first visits may be exploratory. They're gonna click around your class. But it brings back to the point I made the more consistent our course designs are, the, um, the, the, the easier it is for students going to be to figure things out. Now, I didn't, sh I didn't go through some clicks, but there are some students on their first through six visits, and it's a lot, never hit the syllabus, even though it was on the homepage. Now, in the stats course, the syllabus wasn't on the homepage. It was over in the left-hand navigation, and I know, noticed a lot of students did not hit the syllabus. In my own course, looking at the data for spring semester, guess what I found? The syllabus was still named syllabus fall 2015. Oops. <laughs> so if you're open with the data, right, you gotta learn, you'll learn something. Uh, many visits with the course do not start at the homepage. You see that, right? Even their first visits. That to-do list, when assignments are due, when they get announcements, uh, now in the new UI, right, we've got some icons right at the bottom. Okay, all right. Um, the syllabus, oh, the, so we got the to-do list is driving it. The syllabus is being missed by some students from during the first few visits. That's the takeaway. I haven't run any statistical analysis to come up with the percentages. I've just been looking at the data, looking at this. We'll now go back and kind of look at that. There is a lot of data in Canvas to sift through. And um, to real, we pull it down. We have both the Redshift and the CSV file and with how this data was gathered was pulling down the CSV file, which has all of the basic tables, all the tables. 
And there was one main table we used, which was the pass table. Uh, actually, it was the request table. But then there were 16 total tables that were used so you could go in and get, take the ID and match it up with a, something human readable and stuff like that, right? And you need, you need somebody who can take that data and make it sensible for you. And luckily, we have Megan on board that takes our crazy ideas and makes it presentable. I'm going to invite um, John Louvier up now, and then we'll do some Q&A. He's going to talk about uh, where we're headed at Utah State University with uh, our next steps. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so by raise of hands, who wants all of these graphs right in there for your courses? <laughs> And who would love to sit down with a faculty member and say, let's look at your course, let's identify the design. You know, everybody's raising their hand here. This is fantastic. So do we. <laughs> so what we gave is examples of four courses. And we gave you um, kind of a, a, some insights of, of what we're doing at, at our university and a little bit of how we're doing it. But it kind of gets back to that, that first slide, that group. The team that we have, that's a group of very dedicated and extremely smart individuals. But we've now kind of come to this tipping point of, of technology and resources. So what you see here is this, uh, it was provided to us by Civitas, and it paints a very good picture. So we're, we presented to you some really good, um, insightful reporting tools okay, about the courses. And we can do that. I, I would say we're pretty good at that. It's complex, it takes a lot of time, but we can provide some good reports that are useful. Well, with those reports, we can sit down and we can analyze individual courses. So we're not able to yet look at the scale, but we can do individual courses, do some research uh, on maybe a handful of courses, but it's very limited. So the tipping point that we're at as a university and with our staffing and all of our resources is, is where we're trying to do this at scale. So we not only want to provide these graphs and this, this reporting information for all of our courses, but we also want to start looking at well, what's next? What are these questions? Are there patterns? So when we're seeing not only individuals that are um, attending class or looking at at different objects and pieces of our course at certain time frames or turning in assignments, we want to know, well, is there a pattern or are there indicators that are significant with that group of students that schedule their time accordingly to turn in their assignments early? And why is that? How are they prepared for that? Is it something back in their high school? Is it something in their gen ed courses, now in their graduate courses? These are all the questions we, we just can't answer yet because we've hit this sort of limitation to be able to scale this up. And so as a result, what we have done is we have uh, determined that we have to reach out and find a, a vendor to help us with this. And so we went through the RFP process and we're now um, have selected a vendor to help us assist us with this. Um, but that's just one piece of the puzzle. I mean, identifying a vendor is great. Okay, somebody has a good tool and they've got some good data scientists and they have the ability to clean and normalize. Fine. Then there's this implementation, this cultural change, because now we're going to be presenting a lot of information to a lot of different people, our faculty, our staff, our students. What information do we provide to who? What information do we have the policy that allows us to give that information? Do we have the right data governance in place? These are all sort of the big questions, and that's where we're at right now. So we've got our vendor, we've got our policies, now we're working on the culture, and we're working on this implementation strategy to do this at scale. So this is sort of the natural progress that I think we're all experiencing. I mean, Canvas has done a fantastic job in a, giving us the data or giving us access to data. Now the next step is kind of on us is what are we going to do with it and how are we going to get there? So that's kind of where we're at. And um, Kevin? Yeah, one of the cool things is the predictive analytics, right? Can we pull stuff from this? and build some models and let the data speak for itself that shows predictions of how students are doing and or what makes a successful student in a course. Or is the course working, right? Or there's some things that we could find. We want to get to that point, like John said. Okay, um, I'm going to show you one last cool little graph and then we'll open up for Q&A. John has the microphone. We are going to, he is a runner. He ran up to the 14,000 
foot peak the other day when we first got here. He's going to run the mic around for Q&A so everybody can hear it. Because you're going to ask very complicated questions and I'm going to forget what you asked by the time you're done. All right, let's go back. This was an interesting one. You may have seen this one in the Chronicle of Higher Ed. This is called a chord graph. I first saw this related to a music song where each one of these things was a beat and how you could naturally go from one thing to the next. Okay, what does this represent? The things around the outside are course items. It could be a discussion, a module, a quiz, right? Um, the, the, and let, me, let me just hit one. For example, module three assignment. The red is how did students navigate to that page? Where did they come from? In a simple visual, now this took hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to put together for a single class. We haven't done it for any others. So red is how they got to that. So you can see they came from quizzes, they came from discussions to it, to the assignment. The, the um, green is when they left, where did they go? In simplicity, what it can show you is, is there any content items that are getting skipped, right? You could simply look through and see if there's any content items getting skipped. We haven't looked at this at the cost of putting it together versus the value yet. But it's pretty cool, right? <laughs> pretty cool. All right. All right. We've got some time for Q&A. So we got one right here on the front row. We'll start here. Please state your name and what, who you represent and ask your question. Hi, John. I'm Nicole with ESCU. Um, I had a question, who is your data vendor? And for those of us that already have an analytics platform, is there any way that we could partner to have some of these things built into our existing platform? Go ahead. Okay, so the, the data vendor that we selected was Civitas. And um, there was actually, for those who went to the data mixer last night, there was a fair amount of discussion of how can we start sharing um, either some of our visualization ideas, uh, maybe algorithms, and um, and so what we're going to we're going to work with the community a little bit on that, and then see if we can find a place that we can share this. Maybe some of the, even some of the um, the database calls or the things through GitHub. So watch the community for that. I think that will be the best place that we can start to share this. An idea I have with the paths tool, where you could see individual student paths, I would like to turn that into you could grab your Canvas data get it into a CSV and upload it and, and look at it. I'd like to build a Canvas data player. So if anybody's interested in, in helping us what that might look of, how we could take those. Because right now, we had to extract, clean, put the data together. That's a manual process. So we got to figure out first an automated process to take those paths that the students did. I'll put a CSV file that you can then just simply upload to a, a player that you can view it, right? And keep it anonymized so we're, we're safe, okay? Another question. Back. Oh, John's got it. Hi. Um, I'm Mike Weston from St. Edwards in Austin. And the question I have is um, I'm hoping you can validate or, or challenge the, a particular idea premise uh, that I've seen in, in Canvas versus Blackboard, for example. And that is presenting content via a page versus click, download, open. So in many cases uh, in Blackboard and in other LMSs, uh, content is given to students via a Word document or PDF, which they have to download and open. Uh, one of the nice things that I think about Canvas is presenting content directly on the page. And I'm wondering if this type of stuff can validate that, that it, by presenting content on a page, it makes it more likely to be viewed by the student versus click, download, open. Thank great you. question to ask, yeah. Um, great question to ask. I think it could. Um, a side note. I actually signed up for the Blackboard Ultra Educator Preview to see what they're doing with their new SAS model. And I couldn't figure out how to create an assignment. I had to create a folder first, and then I could put the assignment in that folder. If you, anybody who's come from Blackboard, you remember that from Learn 9. I had forgotten that. But yeah, it is a different model for doing things, and it would be interesting to see. I think you could, um, maybe if you built a Canvas course that way, right? All right, question, another question. You got one, John, somewhere? Right here, right, right over there. Right there. And then we got somebody here, right? Okay.
Lene Whitley Potts from um, the California Community College uh, system. Um, I'm wondering, as someone who does qualitative um, data analysis, if there's any interest in pairing this with some student focus groups to find out from students why they're navigating and um, why they're making the choices they are and seeing if there's any rationale from the student's perspective. And I would love to pair with that. Yeah, the whole time I was looking at this data, I was going, I wonder what was going on in the student's mind why they were doing that, right? Yeah, I, I agree. It would, be, it, it would actually be fun to just sit them down and do one of those UI experiments where you record it as they navigate, then come back and play it and say, why did you do this? I think that would be a fun experiment. Uh, it's interesting, the whys. But you know, some people, a, a data article I was reading that you know, somebody like Google or Amazon looks at this data and says, we, don't, we can see that this page is more popular than this page. We don't know why, but does it really matter? You know, it may or it may not, right? All right, there was a question right here. And then we got one over here. Uh, my name's Fontaine, and I'm from Eastern Kentucky University. Uh, we don't currently use Canvas. We are evaluating um, whether or not we want to switch to Canvas. We're on Blackboard. Uh, and my question is, we actually dictate how the students, they have to go to the home page, they have to do a plagiarism policy, they have to take a syllabus quiz before anything else opens. Can that still be constructed you can do that. in you Canvas can do that. if you wanted to do that? Yes, you can do that in Canvas uh, with modules. Uh, you can release modules based on like a quiz. You could give them a quiz or something. And we do have faculty that do do that to make sure students read the syllabus. But if they can go to a to-do list, if they can you, you know, make lock those so they can't get all that stuff? Okay. Yeah. So I'll tell you my personal philosophy. I think I mentioned it. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing for students to be able to get to where they need to, where they want to right away. But what it tells you and I is we need to design our courses so our content isn't on multiple pages for a unit or that we've got it defined within a module, right? So when they, they can go directly to that module or to that assignment, and maybe in that assignment page you got links back if you have content other places, right? Students want to be able to get in, figure out what they've got to do, and work on that assignment. Hi, my name is Molly Smith, and I'm from the University of Denver. And I think this speaks a little bit to the question that was just asked, but do any of these courses have prerequisites so things will unlock uh, only if the previous module or previous page has been accessed? I think that would probably impact the data a lot. Uh, and then as a follow-up to that, is this data driving decisions around how to help students understand the best fit navigation through the course? Or is this data helping you inform how to make it most flexible to allow students to do whatever they were going to do anyway? So kind of the push versus pull in terms of the strategy and design behind the whole project. Yeah, so first question. Uh, to my knowledge, none of these courses have prerequisite things that you've, you've got to do. To the second one, this stuff is hot off the press. Um, I got some of the last visualizations yesterday. Um, so I, I had the data in the Excel. I had a lot of it, but we decided based on what we saw to do some other things, uh, to put together some stuff. So Megan worked and made that available yesterday morning so we could show that to you. So it hasn't been used. The instructional design group is, that's here has seen some of it, but not all of it. But I think it, for us right now, it's aha, right? We're getting a little bit of insight into how students, and one of those takeaways is they're not always going through the homepage. They're going to go where they need to go based on either things that are pushed to them, like announcements that they get an alert for or an assignment is due. Students are deadline driven, guaranteed. We're seeing that, right? OK, we got another. Was there another question? Two more questions. Two more questions. Was there another one up front? OK, we got one right back there to the left, yep. Hi, my name is Kevin Hewlin from the University of North Florida. So I have a question for you about your course in comparison to the other one. Uh, you, you have the assignments, and that's where you like to put everything. And in the other course designed by the ID team, they've got a different layout. So let's say you come back and you find out that the data and where students are going is equally good if we put that in that category. What do you tell the larger group of faculty in terms of making a decision about what they should do at that point? Right. Do I take your, your avenue, dump it all in the assignments, or do I do the learning modules and try to guide them? I'm never a conformist, right? I like to experiment <laughs> in my class. Um, 
I, I've been contemplating going back to modules. But when we used WebCT, I was a big modules person. I advocated. A lot of people didn't get modules. And then when we moved to Canvas at first, they didn't have it. And several of us had to advocate for them. And then I had an aha moment. Hey, this WYSIWYG is everywhere. I can easily put my content in this assignment. Now, it doesn't work for all classes. If the data shows no difference, or if the data showed this was better, or that students' performance was better because of this, I would definitely, you know, what I like about this data is it may be able to support the current design strategies that are going on, and it'll have some aha moments that will help us think about how we're designing courses so that we're making sure students don't miss something. And that question is the question of scale. So that's where we're at. So is it going to, maybe it doesn't make any difference in these individual courses, but does it in the larger picture? And how does instructional design assist students in terms of performance? So, Okay. We got time. One more? Yeah, my name is Linda from the California Community Colleges. And my question is, do you have the data that's um, saying the app users on their mobile devices are doing a different process than the web-based on their laptops? I and haven't if filtered. So what is that? That hasn't been filtered yet. It's a good point about mobile data. That hasn't been pulled out. Uh, Megan tells me it's a little bit more difficult to sort through the the mobile data, that hasn't been totally sorted out, but that's a good idea about looking at how they're doing things with the mobile. And uh, the mobile data is not completely available and identified in our Canvas data yet. So that's, that's a, another question for Instructure. So the city team will be up here. If you've got uh, questions you want to talk to us, I've got business cards. Thank you so much for coming. This was a great turnout. I hope it, I hope it gave you some things to think about. <laughs>